Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Rebecca Keppel. In today's video, I'm gonna be making a bunch of Christmas cards with the new My Favorite Things Merry and Bright kit. Unfortunately, this kit sold out super, super fast, but you can still get the stamps and dies and pattern paper, so I'm going to share a bunch of inspiration with the things that you can still purchase. One thing I love about My Favorite Things is that for US customers, there is free shipping over $25. I don't know about you, but it's super easy for me to spend $25 at My Favorite Things. I really love My Favorite Things bold and modern designs, and the colors in this kit were super fresh and fun. This video is another episode in the Support Small Card Making Businesses series, and you can see the rest of those videos here. But for now, let's just jump right into some bright and fun Christmas cards. I love my favorite things packaging. It's true, the box did contain a whole lot of happy. The kit is safely packed inside a bag, inside tissue paper, inside a perfectly sized box. There was a little jelly belly included too. Here's a list of the kit contents and inspiration sheet. I loved all these ideas, but I decided to make slimline cards with my kit because the string of lights die really works well on that size and format of card. But obviously from these gorgeous designs, it works really well with A2 as well. This is the Very Merry 6x6 pattern paper pad, which you can purchase individually, so I'll share some of the cute patterns inside. I love the really bright colors and modern designs. I know 6x6 pattern paper doesn't really lend itself to the size of slimline cards, so stick around for this end of this video and I'll share a way to use this pattern paper on a larger than 6 inch card. These are the main dies that I use, the Christmas Lights Dynamics. In this one die set, you get two light strings, three bulbs, three shine pieces for the bulbs, three inner workings or filaments, and three bulb caps. I'll use them all in this video at least once in the cards that I create. This is the Phrase Builders Dynamics and can cut out the block stamps or label stamps that say merry and bright. I'll use both of these later in the video as well. Here's the rest of the Merry and Bright stamp set. I love all the holiday sentiments and the mix of fonts. There are just so many options here. To get started on the first slimline card, I'm going to prep some glitter cardstock for the light strings. I'm using Thermweb Easy Cut Adhesive, which is a sheet of thin double-sided adhesive perfect for using when cutting with fine or detailed dies. Peel off one protective layer of the Easy Cut and lay the sticky side down on the back of your glitter cardstock. Then die cut the glitter cardstock with the die cutting into the glitter side of that glitter cardstock. You'll then have glitter cardstock stickers in the shape of all the dies that you cut. Next I'm going to cut the bulbs and shine marks of the bulbs with bright cardstock. These are the cardstocks that came with the kit, but I'll link to the colors that they have individually or others that I think are similar if they're out of stock. Then cut a piece of white cardstock to three and a half by eight and a half inches. I then put the remainder of that white cardstock into my score pal and scored it at three and a half inches, folded it and reinforced the fold. Now I only have to trim off the excess to complete the card base. Sometimes with the easy cut on the back, the die cuts stay all in place like this on the cardstock, which makes it really easy to just peel away the glitter string, which now has an adhesive backing, and place it on my white cardstock panel. The great thing about easy cut is that you have some time to lift it up and move it around if you haven't pressed it down on the paper firmly yet. I do the same thing with the second glitter string having the ends meet creates a really nice long string, long enough to take up the entire slimline card front. I picked two sentiments from the stamp set and was happy to find that they perfectly fit under the strings. Since I'm working on a slimline card, I need to use my original size Misty because it would not fit in the mini. Once everything is lined up, I use Gina K's Amalgam Black Ink in Obsidian and wait until you see how beautifully it stamps these pretty detailed stamps. The strings were a bit longer than the card, so I trimmed them off with some nonstick scissors and got to work planning the bulbs. I decided to use a coordinating color of cardstock on each bulb for the shine of the bulb. So I did a light pink on the dark pink, a dark pink on the light pink, a light green on the dark green, and then for the blue I ended up actually just ink blending a little bit of the same blue cardstock to make the shine. 
I didn't put easy cut on the bulbs and shines, but they're all easy enough to adhere with tape runner. But I did use easy cut on the back of the bulb filaments and caps. So once the inner pieces are poked out of these, they are simply a peel and stick effort. Even though the filaments have caps on the end, I did put the extra cap right on top of that. I like that dimensional look of the bulb caps and the silver glitter shine is such a nice touch on this otherwise very simple card. I needed two more filaments and caps, so I cut a few edges off of the glitter cardstock with the easy cut on it already so I wouldn't waste any of that. I kept these small dies all attached together. I didn't clip them apart. So I just placed these squares of glitter cardstock on the dies that I needed and it worked out perfectly. To really make this card shine, I decided to use Nouveau Crystal Glaze on each of the bulbs to make them look like glass. This is my favorite way to add shiny dimension to cards because the glaze comes out of the bottle really easily. Even when you're towards the end of the bottle like I am here, you can't tell, but I don't have very much left and it is still flowing beautifully. The nozzle is really easy to control and I have literally never had to get the nozzle unstuck. It never dries up in the tip. Plus, there are hardly ever air bubbles, and when there are, they easily pop with the nozzle because the liquid is thin enough to move around without making dents in the dimensional adhesive. I set it aside to dry for a while, and I had to move it to a place that I would not even accidentally touch it because I constantly do that and ruin things. Once dry, I added some tape runner to the card base and placed my card panel down onto it so that I would still avoid touching those bulbs, and I am happy to report that I was able to completely let them dry without ruining them. This is absolutely a first for me. For this next card, I wanted to show how you could use more traditional holiday colors and how they still look great with the modern designs of these stamps and dies. I started by cutting a piece of red cardstock down to three and a half by eight and a quarter. I cut a piece of silver glitter cardstock to three and three quarters by eight and a half. Next, I placed a piece of eight and a half by 11 white cardstock in my score pal and placed the silver glitter panel on top to see where I needed to score it. As you can see, I have the old version of the score pal, which is not in the increments of an eighth of an inch. And this card may be the impetus I needed to upgrade. The score lines were going to make my card base either a little bit too small or a little bit too big for this panel. I went with the too small measurement and figured that the panel would just be a hair larger and that's okay. Turns out my silver cardstock was a bit short too, so I trimmed everything and got to work on the main card panel. I decided to heat emboss the large Merry and Bright sentiment, so I put the red cardstock in my original Misty, treated it with anti-static powder, and stamped it with Versamark ink. I poured plenty of white embossing powder on top to make sure all the letters were completely covered, tapped off the excess, and then heat set it to melt the embossing powder. I had die cut all the strings and caps and filaments out of white cardstock with easy cut adhesive applied to it, and so I placed the light strings on the panel. Instead of stretching the strings across the whole slimline panel, I decided to have them both on an angle. I love the way the white strings coordinate with the white heat embossing. I then added gold metallic foil and silver glitter cardstock bulbs. I didn't feel like these needed filaments or caps. Their shine was enough to make the card special. If your easy cut adhesive seems like it is not adhering, you may need to burnish it with a bone folder to really press it into the paper and make sure the adhesive is sticking down permanently. I flipped the card over and cut off anything that was hanging off with nonstick scissors. Next, I added a bunch of tape runner to the back of the panel. I used a lot because glitter cardstock tends to resist adhesive, but all the extra adhesive and a little pressure really stuck it down fine. I considered sequin embellishments, and you could totally add them if you'd like, but I really liked the clean and simple look of this card, and there's plenty of shine even without the embellishments. For this last card, I cut a white and blue panel of cardstock to mat the white on the blue. 
I placed my 8.5 by 11 white cardstock in my score pal and placed the blue in there to see where to score. You can see I had the same issue with the score line either being too short or too large. I think this is a sign that it's definitely time for the newer score pal. This is the card that I wanted to use the pattern paper on, but six by six definitely won't work with a three and a half by eight and a half card. So I picked out four sheets of pattern paper that I thought worked really well together. I stacked all four sheets on top of each other and placed them on the white card panel to see what kind of margin I would need around the sides and then slightly folded up the stack of pattern paper. I placed the stack of pattern paper into my trimmer and trimmed them at the fold line. This is how I avoid measuring. Next, I placed them again on the panel to see how wide I should make them so that they would all fit on the card. I pretty much eyeballed this measurement, folded again, cut at the fold line. I lined them up the way I wanted them with similar surrounding margins on all sides. Next, I stamped up the Mary and Bright label stamps and stamped them on pink cardstock. While that was drying, I adhered the pattern paper to the cardstock. To get those margins nice and even, I adhere the first rectangle with even margins on the top, bottom, and sides, and placed the middle two where I thought they would end up. Then I adhere the last rectangle all the way on the right-hand side, and this way I can center out those middle pieces, and if their margins are a little bit bigger, you really won't notice. I'm using light strings from a piece of gold metallic cardstock with easy cut adhesive on the back and I've placed the phrase builder die down on one of those pieces of pattern paper just to see where it would fit. Once the sentiment was dry enough, I temporarily adhere the phrase builder die on top with purple tape. You know it's all lined up when you can't see any of the pink cardstock around the stamping. I decided to add gold caps to the bulbs this time around. I love how you can use the bulbs alone, with caps, with filaments, with shine marks, or any combination of those, and they always look cute. Again, I needed a few more caps, so I cut a couple of the corners of the gold metallic cardstock I had made with the easy cut adhesive, and I placed those squares over the caps I needed and ran it through my die cut machine. Using nonstick scissors, I cut my foam squares in half to fit behind the label sentiments and pop them up. I used full size foam squares to pop up the bulbs as well. I cut off the strings hanging off the side and matted this whole panel onto the blue cardstock. I used the same tape runner to adhere everything down to the card base. Like I mentioned, the kit is sold out, but you can grab these products individually. I will link to them down in the YouTube description box below. I really enjoyed this My Favorite Things kit. It was really packed with lots of supplies, so I'll definitely be looking forward to buying more of theirs in the future. Also, for those US purchasers looking to take advantage of the free shipping over $25, even with that, I received my package very quickly. If you'd like to see me try out other companies' kits, please let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the bell so you can be notified anytime I have a new video available. I'll link to some other videos that you might be interested in here. And as always, please stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you again soon. I really love the... I really love...